Yowie News! It has been absolutely way too long. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6 of Yowie News, the show where I talk about some of the latest railway headlines. And boy, do we have a belter of news to get through in this video. Yep, a lot has been going on during my 8 month long absence. Gosh, I'm so sorry you had to wait for that long. But it's fine, I'm still here, unfortunately. Right, let's get cracking on, starting off with the usual COVID-69 updates. Even though national restrictions have been lifted across the UK, face masks must still be worn on public transport across London. Uh, next slide please. No, not that! Before the main timetable change, Unit 3 on 3207 was converted into a Covid test train at Brighton, which was probably one of the smartest moves GTR made. Eurostar have secured a £250 million rescue package to keep them run through the pandemic, however they are still a very long way from full recovery. TfL revealed that Nighttube is not likely to reopen until 2022. So good luck getting back home, demo man. I love you, man. And it seems Crossrail are almost good to go, as they too have secured funds and are set to open by 2022. Oh dear. And lastly, we say one final thank you to the legend Tom Moore, who sadly lost his life to the virus back in February. We won't ever forget you, Chief. In our first story, we covered the end of the line for rail franchising, and now it will soon be the end of the line for Network Rail. Yes, at last, the long-awaited Keith Williams Rail Review finally came out announcing huge plans to drastically change the state of the UK railway. And in order for these massive plans to take effect, it was announced that by 2023, Network Rail will be partially abolished and absorbed into a new public body known as Great British Railway Journeys. No wait, that doesn't sound right. Oh, Gary! Sorry, I meant Great British Railways. Damn it, Gary, not the TV show, you plub. This brand new organisation promises many things, such as making the railways easier to use by introducing cheaper rail fares and more convenient ways to pay, Rebuilding public transport use by introducing new season tickets, keeping the railways safe and secure, and making the railways more efficient. In terms of franchising, as previously mentioned in the last episode, they will be replaced by new passenger service contracts, which will require operators to meet strict standards for passenger priorities, meaning operating companies should be striving to give us the best train services possible, and if they don't, well, failure to meet the standards will result in the operator possibly getting the booty by the government if necessary. Furthermore, with comfort being one of the many priorities, this could also mean that ironing board seats may be phased out in favour of more comfortable ones, as well as perhaps the removal of 3 plus 2 seating layouts. So essentially, Great British Railways on a whole is a company that hopes to make things simpler and easier for everyone within the railway, as well as those who use it. And as much as I want to be sceptical about these plans, I'm impressed that the government is finally doing something good to our lovable railway network. This is what we bloody need! Not all of this nonsense. All of this. I do look forward to this new public body. And hopefully in the next 10 years, the UK railways can be something to smile about. Also in the news. What? Another derailment happened? Oh no. Unfortunately, 507006 was involved in a collision at Kirkby Station during the evening of the 13th of March. On board the train were 12 passengers and 2 crew members. But luckily, nobody was severely hurt. The driver was taken to hospital as a routine precaution and then later on arrested on suspicion of endangering railway safety. The damage caused from the incident was quite significant, however, Network Rail did manage to clean up the mess rather quickly, and the train itself was rescued by a Rail Operations Group Class 37. Then unfortunately written off and scrapped. F please. It's good to hear that everything was resolved in the end, but come on, these events should not be happening. Also in the news, do you remember when I said this? Oh, and one more thing, pigs back in December, how about that? Well unfortunately, I'm afraid they are not coming back. After Southwestern Railway announced they permanently withdrew the units from service due to their high maintenance cost, poor reliability, and of course, COVID-64. 
So after all of that, it essentially means that SWR wasted a whopping £45 million on the refurbishment of these trains. What an L. It's a massive shame this had to happen, as I'm sure a lot of us were looking forward to seeing more of these operations. But this says a lot about First Group, doesn't it? Always making the wrong decisions. However, with the departure of the pigs, it has in turn meant... BREAKING NEWS! Class 458s are staying with South Western Railway! Yes! My favourite trains are set to replace the Class 442s on Portsmouth Direct Line services and additionally will receive a £25 million refurbishment to keep them running in traffic until 2027. This will include the units receiving the SWR livery, an interior refresh retaining 2 plus 2 seating, USB ports, new toilets and perhaps the biggest part of this whole investment, removing the fifth car. And reinstating the trains to four cars and 100 miles per hour operation. Honestly, as much as I'm gutted to hear the 442s go, it's fantastic to hear that the 458s have a future, and I can't wait to see their much needed refurbishments. Who knows if we'll even see Junipers running 12 car formations in the future as a result of this. In the meantime though, all 442s are being sent to Wolverton Works, where they will be stripped of useful parts for the 458 refurbishment. And the contract for this refurb was awarded to Bombosto. I have no idea when these new passenger services are set to begin, as I'm fairly certain we're still waiting for this thing. But when there's more information available, I'll be sure to keep you updated. Also in the news, South Eastern revealed further plans regarding the introduction of their newly acquired Class 707 fleet. From this autumn, we should expect to see 707s being rolled out on metro services between London, Hayes, Dartford and Sevenoaks, replacing a small number of networkers that will be heading into storage. The 707s will be repainted into a new SE Metro livery and include a refreshed interior featuring 271 seats with plug sockets and Wi-Fi, air conditioning and information displays. As of now, there are only six trains with South Eastern that are currently undergoing driver training and testing, but once enough units have been delivered from SWR, full operations should begin by next year. As for the networkers, some have already been sent to be stored at Works Up Yard, but it's uncertain if those units will ever return to passenger service. So say your prayers now, people. Pray that one day you will see a few of the stored 465s back and also that they refurb the 376 already! Speaking of new plans, the new open access operator Grand Union that proposed services from London Euston to Stirling provides plans on the rolling stock they're going to utilise. It was originally going to be Class 91's hauling Mark IV carriages, but instead they made the decision of using new Stadler Class 93 logos to do the job. So in other words, 91, you are the weakest link. Goodbye! Gary, do you not know how to turn the volume down? You gave us all hearing damage for God's sake! Goodness me! Approval of these proposals have not been confirmed yet, but if successful, we should see 93's and Mark IV sets running every 3 hours in each direction by December 2022. This does look like a very exciting plan, though I have to say, please don't go through with that livery. It is so ludicrously boring. Next up in the news, Siemens unveiled the final concept design of the brand new London Underground 2024 stock, which will be built over at their new £200 million manufacturing plant in Ghoul. The new Inspiro London trains are expected to enter service on the Piccadilly line by 2025, replacing the current 1973 stocks. They will feature new and improved air conditioning, walk-through carriages, real-time information screens, and loads of other benefits in keeping the train sustainable and reliable. If all goes well, then we should also hopefully see the pick line running with 27 trains per hour by 2027. Though at first I wasn't that much of a fan of the original concept design, I do quite like the finalised version, with my only gripe being the windows, which seem a bit small from my point of view, but that might be down to the perspective of the concept. You know, it could be worse. Sorry American viewers. Nevertheless, it should be exciting to see how this will pan out in the next few years. But I can't let the fantastic 73 stocks go. Just look at them. I do not want to go. 
you heard the man. Also, if you're wondering why the Piccadilly line has this priority over the Bakerloo, then Heathrow Airport should sort of answer your question. Personally though, I would have preferred it if the Baker Lula received new trains first, but just like the Central Line, it will still be a long while until that happens. Oh, in fact, that reminds me. Let's go over now to the Central Line Depot to see how the 92 stock improvement program is going. Oops, dropped something. Yep, that sounds about right. Okay, next. A van to West Coast attempted to break the London to Glasgow speed record for 39044 and failed. All thanks to a 15 mile per hour temporary speed restriction at car stairs, which cost them 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's nice that they tried and all, but if they knew there was a TSR that wasn't going to go anytime soon, then they were simply done out from the start. Oh well, at least it's a new record best for Mr. Royal Scott. God, why can't this country do anything right? Hell was caused along most high speed main lines after Hitachi IETs were taken out of service due to cracks discovered under bogies. More specifically, the Your Dampers. Which I find funny because Your is spelt in the exact same way as my name. But for God's sake, it's Yao, okay? Don't be cocking that up. As you may have suspected, a lot of train services were severely disrupted because of this problem. However, even though some units have resumed normal operation since, there are still a few that are undergoing inspections. Hence why for the Great Western Main Line, six Gatwick Express Class 387s were subleased to GWR for providing more capacity. While Detachi may have fixed a lot of their crack addiction problem, they didn't quite stop the memes. Well that also happened, an NNER train heading from Stirling to King's Cross struck a cow between Durham and Doncaster. But luckily, no one was hurt and the passengers were safely moved to another train to continue their journeys. The train looks hurt though, is it alright? What the? Again? Oh, fine. 801-101 was damaged after hitting Eric Lee in the area of Little Mill Level Crossing for some reason. Anything else? What the? Oh. I really don't know what is happening with the NNER fleet, but a lot are getting battered. Unfortunately, Unit 80123 struck a car which was left unattended at Rossington Level Crossing. Though again, nobody was injured, but serious damage was caused to the car, the train, and the crossing. I'm glad that everyone was okay and all, but come on humanity! Don't leave cars unattended! Here's an idea for when you build your class 810 trains hikrakchi. Make them bulletproof. Job done. Also in today's news, East Midlands Railway are on a roll with their new class 360s as they can now be seen in service operating on the newly electrified London to Corby line. As well as that, two units, 102 and 112, were repainted into EMR's absolutely gorgeous corporate livery, now with Connect branding after they were branded from EMR Electrics, while the rest still remain in old National Express colours for the time being. According to EMR, the refurbishment of the trains was delayed as a result of the pandemic, but they still aim to get that task done as swiftly as possible. In fact, did you know that because of successful test runs and driver training, the fleet actually entered service a week before the main timetable change on shuttle runs? Absolutely fantastic work from EMR. Nice to see the 360s fitting in right at home on those new services. Meanwhile on Yarn White, the line should have reopened by now following its huge renovation, However, due to software problems with the new Class 484D trains, the reopening of the line has been delayed, with no official date as to when it will actually resume operation. That's a bit of a shame to hear, but on another note, I have some good news regarding their predecessors. After the 483s were withdrawn just before the line's closure, the trains have ended up in quite a lot of different places. A car from 002 is on eBay, 006 and 008 are preserved at the Epping and Ongar Railway, 007 is preserved at the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, and the rest was sent to Jesus. <laughs> Lastly in the news, following the May timetable change, it has meant that we have reached yet another end of an era, as the paces of transport for Wales... <laughs> 
Class 365s of Great Northern and HSTs of East Midlands Railway were all retired and withdrawn from service. Transport for Wales was the last national operator to continue use of the Pacers. Since then, the pieces of rubbish were succeeded by Class 150 Sprinters and more pieces of rubbish. In other words, who cares? But two weeks earlier, on the 15th of May, saw the farewells of two absolutely brilliant trains. First, the Class 365 Networker Express units. The trains well known for their wacky but wonderful motor sounds and smiling looks, which were sadly taken out of service in favour of extra Class 387-2s from Gatwick Express. All the trains are currently being moved into warm storage, though their future on the railway still remains very uncertain. And of course, the Class 43 HSTs, after an outstanding 45 years of service. Though you could say this was technically a second send-off for the XNNER sets, but we'll just roll with it. Prior to the last day, two power cars received special paint jobs. 43274 was repainted into EMR's interim livery, while 43302 was painted back into the classic intercity swallow livery, as well as renumbered back to 43102, and the power cars form one of the last services out of St Pancras. The whole send-off must have been great to go to, but even before then, some window-hanging idiots had their own ideas. I mean, no wonder health and safety exists. But if you would like your head severed otherwise, then be my guest. Anyway, as a final salute, let's pay respect to these trains one very last time. Look, I don't live in Wales, so that's the closest thing you're getting to a bloody pacer. Also, before we move on, I thought I would quickly pay my respect to the late Celia Drummond, an announcer who was heard on two lines on the London Underground, and used to be the main voice along with Phil Sayer across the southern and southwestern networks. She will be greatly missed, and we thank her for her tremendous work. And those are all your main headlines. Cool, that felt like a lot. <laughs> In other news, speaking of HSTs, Locomotive Services Limited unveiled their new 5 car Staycation Express set, which will work alongside Northern Services on the settled Carlisle line until the end of this summer. 125 Group's reserve power car 43044 was given an Intercity Executive repaint and was also refitted with a Paxman Valenta engine after its original VP185 engine suffered from a plague of issues. It is expected to be used on rail tours at some point soon, though details remain unspecified for now. And rail adventure of it. Oh god. That does not look good to look at for more than five seconds. Uh oh. Yep, my eyes are now burning. Chilton Railways introduced their brand new battery diesel hybrid flex class 168 unit, which entered service on the company's 25th anniversary. We wish them the best for the future. Class 769s have entered service with Northern on the Southport to order the edge route, though their acceleration performance has been reported to be quite appalling. Great job, Heathrow Express 387s and Greater Anglia 720s are also now in service, and bottom line, 387s are terrible, and the 720s are surprisingly okay. Additionally, a few Class 377s have re-entered service with Southern following their recent refurbishments, which feature track lights, new information screens, and updated PIS displays. Plus, speaking of Electro Stars, 377-342 is now back as 377-442.
after the carriage that got damaged in the fire five years ago was repaired and reattached to the unit, enabling it to return to its original state as a four car train. How wholesome. If you're a regular view of my train sim reviews, you should remember when I mentioned this. Class 221 is for some reason in a fictional livery because I don't think one in real life will ever look like that. Therefore, it is wrong. <laughs> well, what do you know? Some actually received an interim repaint. But, as you can clearly spot, it still retains its red roof and grey body. So for those of you wondering, the tears livery is still wrong. <laughs> S-Stock announcements have changed. This is the District Line train to Upminster. The next station is Gunnersbury. No! I much preferred the way it sounded originally. Oh well, the good thing is it comes with status updates like on the Victoria line, of which I got no footage of, so bollocks. For the first time in over 44 years, passenger trains are running through the Fur Gasworks Tunnel again, which reopened as a result of the King's Cross upgrades taking place. The Northern Line extension to Battersea is coming along very nicely and is set to open by this autumn. The Class 321 Swift Express freight unit was shown off by Eversholt Rail and Wabtec at Doncaster, looking very fancy indeed. XTFRL Class 360s were handed over to the Rail Operations Group. C2C unveiled their new Class 357 hair train promotional livery. I'm sure there's a reason behind it, but we're running out of time. Former Grand Central Mark IV DVT cars were bought by Transport for Wales. They will be receiving new refurbishments and are due to run on the Swansea to Manchester route from December 2022. The first few Class 803s for the new Open Access Operator East Coast trains were delivered and are currently on test runs. <laughs> 803. Just look at it. It's literally a blue 801. Like... There is no difference. Nice to know the taxi are really milking the expansion of their UK A train fleet. I suppose you could say they're doing a cracking job at it. <coughs> uh. The Millennium Falcon Starship looking class 777s for Mercy Rail have begun daylight testing and have also been authorised for passenger use by the OOR. Plus in Wales, new ugly as hell class 197s are also currently on test runs, with entry into service expected to be next year. <laughs> Don't even bother this time. Also, I'm just gonna leave this image here. Very sexy indeed. Right, 390, we're breaking up. And finally, in Scottish news, 334006 has joined the homosexual club. Scott Rail's modified Class 153s from Northern, now known as Active Travel, are in operation. And the franchise is set to be nationalised by next March. <laughs> what? Lastly, it wouldn't be a Yarra News video without our wonderful trade correspondent, John, who is live from one of the Hitachi manufacturing plants. How are things going there, Job? Cracking work there. <laughs> also, John, the votes are in regarding you and Gary. You're out of the job, mate. Oh, now he's just drawing his office. That ain't looking good for my head at marketing. That's the end of the video. Once again, I'm really sorry for keeping you all waiting so long for this, but I thank you for your patience, and I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. Also, thank you to those who submitted their pics and videos. Once I've gathered enough information for the next episode, be sure to submit anything you'd like me to use to yowienews at gmail.com. More info will be in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.